So let's see here. This is case one. It's a 60-year-old woman with a nodule on the elbow. And let's uh, full screen that. All right, so what did you guys think about this uh, case? Does anyone have any ideas for what it might be? And again, don't be shy. Rheumatoid nodule? Rheumatoid nodule. Very good. And you can see we're down in the subcutis. You know how we know we're in the subcutis? We, you can see a little fat here, but anytime you've got a full nodule that basically has no skin with it and no muscle with it, you're probably in the subcutis. I mean, anything that's taken out like in office, that is. I mean, a general surgeon can go pluck a little piece of something out of the retroperitoneum, of course. But, but as a general rule in derm path, when you see a, a relatively circumscribed nodule with nothing attached to it, or with a little fiber adipose tissue, you are probably at the level of subcutis or maybe fascia. And that's what we've got here. There's a big cystic space in the middle. But more interesting than that is this stuff out here around the outside, which you guys recognize right away as rheumatoid nodule. So rheumatoid nodules um, uh, obviously develop in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, some patients get them, some don't, some get multiple. They can occasionally be like in the lungs or other organ uh, sites, although I, I don't know that I've ever actually seen a case of that. Um, but what they are is they're granulomas, right? They are palisaded necrobiotic granulomas. So that's the general pattern that we're dealing with here is the palisaded necrobiotic granuloma pattern. You got histiocytes forming this palisaded lined up kind of rim around a central zone of necrobiosis. So what is necrobiosis? Well, I think it's actually kind of like a fancy word for dead collagen basically, okay? The idea is that is a kind of a collagen rich central space that is has minimal or few nuclei there. So the fibroblasts make the collagen and then as the central area dies, the fibroblasts go away and the collagen proteins are left behind. And oftentimes that goes hand in hand with some other substances, okay? In this case, the general thing that's left behind here is fibrin. So these, these granulomas tend to have a very fibrin rich or what we sometimes say fibrinoid necrosis. It's kind of dead collagen uh, mixed with a bunch of fibrin. So it gives them this very bright red, kind of brick red almost appearance. So these are classic examples, classic examples of rheumatoid nodule. They are red granulomas. They usually have a predominantly red uh, color in them, okay? And let's go over to the side here and look at these cells. These are bland histiocytes. They kind of have oval to round nuclei and abundant cytoplasm, and they're kind of packed close together to make this nice uh, row here. So what's one bad thing, a malignant thing, that can mimic rheumatoid nodule? Does anyone know? Epithelioid sarcoma. Very good, epithelioid sarcoma. So the, the best way to sort out, I mean, they're the first step in sorting out epithelioid sarcoma from rheumatoid nodule. That at low power, they can look similar. Some epithelioid sarcomas make these palisaded arrangements, but in the middle, they have like true tumor cell necrosis rather than this fibrinoid necrosis. So once you go and, and zoom into higher power, right away, you'll be like, oh, the cells look really ugly and bad for an for a epithelioid sarcoma. In rheumatoid nodule, they have very bland nuclei. Now, there are mitoses. That is very common, I feel like. I see mitoses in rheumatoid nodule like essentially always. It's a, it's a normal finding to me. Um, but the cells, uh, the cytologic features are much more ugly in epithelioid sarcoma. And once you've seen some examples, you'll recognize that most of the time it's pretty easy to tell they look a lot uglier than these. If you have any doubt, you could do some stains. Keratin and EMA will stain the vast majority of epithelioid sarcoma. And usually epithelioid sarcoma has loss of nuclear INI1 expression or smark b one S-M-A-R-C-B1. So those can all be useful tools if you have any doubt. If I have any doubt, I just do the stain. It's a real cheap way to rule out something that's very rare but very, very bad. The other thing I'll point out is that... Um, you know, a lot of times I see some scattered neutrophils and nuclear dust in the setting of rheumatoid nodule. And usually we're taught that granulomas with neutrophils equals infection. But I feel like this is a finding that I see in, in rheumatoid nodules really often, actually. It's a very common finding. Um, I have rarely seen examples of, um, of infectious granuloma, like um, um, uh, atypical mycobacteria that had a kind of vaguely rheumatoid nodule pattern. So if there is a concern for infection, you could do stains. But um, uh, I don't uh, always routinely do that. It depends on the setting. So this is a really nice example. Uh, the palisading is not always going to look this good, but this is just like amazing, right? Look at that. Red granuloma, that's like the picture to burn in your mind of rheumatoid nodule. 
and they um, do tend to arise down in the subcutis or near the fascia, but you can see them next to joints as well, like this one's the olecranon area, like around the olecranon bursa. The center, sometimes the fibrinoid necrosis can kind of break down and give you this pseudocystic appearance um, after processing that, that central fibrinoid necrosis falls out and, um, and goes away. So that's uh, one of the important members of the palisaded necrobiotic granuloma pattern um, that we see in derm path. And also, uh, even though these do tend to be deep, I see them in the dermis often. I've got multiple examples in my, my teaching sets of, uh, of um, rheumatoid nodule that's in the dermis as well. So don't let it uh, concern you. If you see it in the dermis, it, it could still be rheumatoid nodule. And sometimes they're huge like that. Sometimes they're little like this. And they do tend to be like multiple granulomas clumped together. Like this one, as you can see, many different small, medium, and large granulomas all aggregated together to form the whole nodule. All right. So rheumatoid nodule, any questions?